title for today's sermon is He will change the unchangeable He will do the undoable I'll repeat it for you one more time He will change the unchangeable He'll do the undoable Dear children of God, the problem in our life is that most of the time while we are waiting and we don't think, see things changing in our life We look at the facts We look at the truth around us We look at the facts And then we ourselves understand and accept the fact that it's not going to change because so long it's not changed and you know what this is what the facts are my medical record says this my financial record says this so because of this it's not going to change but dear children of God I want to tell you the Lord's going to attack those documents the Lord's going to attack those situations and he's going to change things in your life which is not changed at all if you believe you can lift your hands and say an amen that he's going to do the undoable in your life amen are you guys excited so I was so excited because I was I couldn't sleep and the Lord was talking to me about this right so when this when this chapter begins Esther the book of Esther chapter 7 verse 1 and 2 the first point for today is when God opens one door he will open the other doors as well but don't be in a hurry come on tell your person don't be in a hurry tell your neighbor don't be in a hurry Tell your neighbor, don't be in a hurry. If God can open one door, He will open other doors as well. But it's very important that you're not in a hurry. The book of Esther chapter 7 verse 1. So the king and Haman went to Queen Esther's banquet. They were drinking wine on the second day. They didn't call us. It's okay. The king again asked Queen Esther, What is your petition? It will be given to you. What is your request? Even up to half the kingdom, it will be granted. For the children of God, the king was eagerly waiting to know what was Esther's petition. And you know, this is the third time the king is asking Esther. Alright? Third time, say third time. Because Esther, when he goes to meet him for the first time, Esther, the book of Esther, chapter 5, verse 3, the king asks, what is it, Queen Esther? What is your request? I can give you half the kingdom. Goes to dinner the first day, after the dinner, he asked her, what is your request? Tell me, I can give it to you. But then, dear children of God, though the king was asking Esther again and again, Esther was not in a hurry to tell the king, king, this is what I need. Or if it was us, and we meet the king for the first time, and king says, oh, this is my kept of hold on, and what is that you want? I will give you half the kingdom. We would half, half for, half of Chennai, half of Kilpok, Right? We would immediately go with the list to the king and say, King, this is what I want. Esther waited. Esther was not in a hurry. Dear children of God, we want to rush things in our life as though God is running a discount sale. All right? Offer last, still stock last. All right? Come soon and grab it. The stock's running out now. December 31st, the sale is closing. Till then, up to 70% off. Come grab the discount of any. We have people calling us also. You know what? The sale going on, lifestyle and shopper stop. You know, just two more days. No, God is not running a discount offer where He's saying time is running out. You need to be in a hurry. Get things done. Rush in. No. He says, I've opened one door for you. Allow me to handle it. I will open the other doors. Hester was not rushing it. The king had to literally ask her three times Esther, what is that you want? What is your request? Even up to half the kingdom, I'll give it to you. But Esther was waiting. She was waiting for the right time. Dear children of God, you know, uh, wives have an anointing and even husbands at times have an anointing to ask and say the things at the very wrong time. Right? You've been through this or even husbands have done this. The wives would have had a bad day. Boss, you should have avoided this comment. This shouldn't have been spoken this time. <laughs> right? Wives, husband comes from a bad day, already is going through a tough time. You are not supposed to ask this, but then, friends, today the Lord is talking to us and saying, You're probably asking the right thing, right thing, but this is not the right time. You need to wait because I opened one door for you. I will also open the remaining doors in your life. Amen. Esther was waiting. The book of Esther chapter 7 verse 3 Queen Esther replied If I have found favor with the king 
and look at this verse very clearly if it pleases the king to grant my request all right dear children of god it's important to please before you plead all right let me repeat that for you it's important to please before you plead every time the king asks esther what is that you want esther replies every time he asked her three times and she also replies three times if it pleases the king if i found favor esther the book of esther chapter 7 verse 3 if i found favor and if it pleases the king esther chapter 5 verse 4 esther replied if it please the king let the king and him and come to the banquet esther chapter 5 verse 7 and 8 esther replied this is my request and deepest wish if i found favor with the king and if it pleases the king dear children of god it's all about pleasing the king first before you go with your plea today a lot of people come to god but our priority is not about pleasing him our priority is about our own requests right i don't know how many of you guys do your regular fasting prayer do you fast regularly weekly once or monthly once or twice but i know people who will fast when they have a problem who will fast when they need a healing who will fast when they want money all right god knows why you are pleading you are not fasting to please god you don't come for a fasting prayer or a night prayer to please god but you come for those prayers because you have a need you know what esther does she wants to please the king first before she goes with a plea so that the king will be pleased and then grant her wish how is a prayer today dear children of god do we just go god only to seek something want something lord give me something give me that give me this or does a prayer please god if you look at the the lord's prayer that god jesus has given us how does it start what's the lord's prayer what is it come on say it together don't speak in tongues our father then then mm then after that when does give us this day our daily bread come does it come in the beginning when the prayer starts where you start give us this day our daily bread and then comes our father who art in heaven no this prayer starts with honoring god first and then the request dear children of god whenever you go to god's presence whenever you start praying it's important that we please the king it's important that we honor him it's important that the worship is always about lifting his name and honoring him and automatically he will grant our requests amen look at how queen esther bases her request every time before she asks something to the king she's like if we have found favor if it pleases the king if you're okay then she says grant me my request dear son of god i would request you all to try this whenever you pray look to please the king focus on pleasing the king when it pleases the king he will make sure that you are pleased amen hallelujah tell your neighbor you need to please the king it's all about the king and it's always about the king right seek ye first the kingdom of god and all these things will be aren't you kingdom of god the king seek the king please the king and the king will make sure that the your desires of your heart will be fulfilled amen you don't even need to take your pleas to him you just have to just please him worship him give him the glory you don't have to carry your request because he knows what you need even before you say it to him right so i want to encourage you change the way you pray change the way you fast change the way you worship whenever you go to god lord i want to pray for this day how do you open your day lord You know what? I have this problem in office, Lord. Handle that for me, Lord. I don't know. I'm going to have a long day, Lord. No, I start the day with only praising and pleasing. He will make sure that everything is in control in my life. Amen. Now, the king asks her. She is not in a hurry, but before she brings out a request, it's all about pleasing. Now, it's very important. while we pray for blessings or promotions it's very important that we pray 
for the wisdom to handle the blessings that God's giving us. You understand what I'm saying? Wisdom to handle the blessings. Because quite often, God gives us the blessings, but we destroy the blessings we receive because we don't have the wisdom to handle it. Have you been there? Or have you seen people doing it? People ask for a blessing, they get it and like, be like, get them. They don't know how to handle it and God's given it to them. That's a lesson for you. Because you are asking for the same blessing and God is withholding because you're still not matured enough to handle that blessing. And if he gives that blessing right now to your hand, you will destroy it and you need to focus on asking for wisdom to handle the blessing. Look at Esther's wisdom. The king says, what do you want? Esther chapter 7 verse 4. She says, for my people and I have been sold to those who would kill, slaughter and annihilate us. If we had merely been sold as slaves, I could remain quiet. But that would be too trivial a matter of war and disturbing the king. Who would do such a thing? Ask the king. She says, King, even if you've been sold as slaves, I wouldn't have disturbed you. Look at her. Look at how wise she speaks. Dear children of God, we know Esther for her beauty. We know Esther for her courage. We know Esther for her authority. We know Esther for her faith. But actually, every day when I read the book of Esther, I'm learning more of Esther's wisdom to handle the power, authority and the blessing that God has given us. Right? Dear children of God, many people ask for blessings. You ask for a car, God gives you a car. Oh, I've gone into people's car and uh, I still prefer garbage trucks than their cars. Oh, you need to go and see their cars. It's like garbage. Right? You need to look at the way they maintain the houses, the jobs they have, even, even how you maintain your own body that God has given you. And we say, you know what? God, if you give me something new, I will maintain it better. If you can't handle 500 rupees, God will not give you 5 lakhs. God, if you give me 5 lakhs, I will come out of my debts. You did not do that when God gave you that 5,000 rupees. Even if he gives you 50 lakhs or 50 crores, you'll mess it up because you right now don't have the wisdom to handle that blessing. Esther took it step by step. She could have openly asked the king the moment the king extended the scepter for the first time and he said, Esther, what do you want? She could have said, you know what, Haman's trying to kill us. She did not do that. She used her wisdom. Step by step, she moved. She waited for the king and the Haman to be alone in her dinner. She waited for the king to ask her again. She made the king curious. She was patient. And when the right time came, she said, you know what? Haman, the wicked guy, he's trying to kill us. This morning, I want to ask you, do you have the wisdom to handle the blessing that God's given you? You know what, today, a lot of people want to get married immediately, want to have a, no? grand wedding but then they don't have the wisdom to take care of their marriages oh I want to get married I want to get married I want to get married but where's the wisdom to handle your marriage all people want to do is post 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 as in not post first they post and then they post that's a different thing weddings you know oh my god I've been to weddings where their photography cost was more than the food cost. There would have been thousand people would have been would have had dinner in their wedding, and but their cost of the photography and videography crazy. I've conducted weddings where I literally wanted to go away from conducting those weddings because I'd be standing here waiting for the bride. The bride would have come there. It would have taken half an hour for the bride from there to come here because. She was posing, he was smiling, five camera members set up, he's saying, Madam, look here, look there. And at the end of the day, after they got married, they put the photos in Instagram, Facebook, oh, my love, my sweetheart, all of that. In one week's time, I know how much love, I know how much sweet the heart is or sore the heart is because I would be going there for all panchayat. They want to get married, but they don't have the wisdom to handle their marriage. 
they want to have children but they don't have the wisdom to bring the children in the right manner they want great jobs they want big businesses they want promotions people I'm not talking about you that's why i'm using the word they wisdom to handle it a couple of days back when we were in dubai my wife ben and i we were just going around so one of the pastors was showing all the big big houses and mansions of all the big sheikhs there all right so wow look at this house look at the rolls royce standing inside look at how big that house is it's an acres and i i was admiring the infrastructure in the building and my wife was concerned about how long will it take to sweep the house and mop the house how many helpers would we need to clean the house actually her question was very wise because you can get the house but who will maintain it oh my god i've been to houses for prayer and house visiting and there have been times i've decided lord i will not visit a house again or another house because they not did not take care of the houses that god has given them and you know what the complaints pastor we are praying for a bigger house why for bigger garbage and bigger smell if you can't take care of that single bedroom that god's given you if you don't take care of the health that god's given you the education the career that god's given you if you don't have the wisdom to handle the blessing that god's given you don't ask for more blessings because you will destroy it with your own hands the more i read the book of esther the more i learn about her wisdom she had the authority she had a request granted the king was all there to grant a request the king was there ready to say whatever she wants but then she took her time step by step she paced her request this you know this 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 morning even as i listen to me it's a holy spirit speaking to you that the lord is reminding you there were blessings which the lord gave you but you messed it up and right now you are asking for more blessings and promotions which the lord is willing to give you but the lord is saying right now all you need to ask is for the wisdom to handle those blessings amen hallelujah step by step then she says this wicked haman is our adversary and our enemy then the king jumped to his feet in a rage and went out to the garden and haman stayed behind he was pleading for his life because he knew that the king intended to kill him now esther wasn't doing anything it was all done she just used her wisdom dear children of god are we asking for god's wisdom to deal not just with problems but to deal with the blessings that god has given us right the next point is it is not your job okay this is the reel which i posted yesterday all right it's not your job to find out how god is going to do his job let me repeat that for you it is not your job to find out how god is going to do his job i put out a reel where my daughter comes and asks me to pay the college fees and i say okay i'll pay it then she says how are you going to pay it when will you pay it how will you arrange the money then i tell her mind your own business your job is to tell me my job is to pay the fees don't tell me how to do my job in fact probably if you're listening to god's voice today god is also telling you don't tell me how to do my job i will do my job says the lord amen amen a problem is will really, god when will you do it god how will you do it who will you use god saying all you need to do is just ask many don't have because you don't ask you're always trying to find out how he is going to do it god says all your job you need to do is just ask me and romans chapter 8 verse 30 it says he did not even spare his own son but gave him up for us won't he also give everything else for us the biggest problem was forgiveness salvation and eternity and that's been taken care what else is big for us today The most important thing is that we need to be forgiven, we need to be saved, and we need to have eternal life. And Jesus gave His life and took care of all of that. 
and we don't have a bigger concern than that today if god can give his own son to take care of all of that how much more will he give for us so why are you bothered about how god is going to deal with your problems it's his job when the israelites were in the wilderness they had the red sea in front of them all right and then they had the pharaoh chasing them lord did you bring us to bring us here to kill us the lord said be still it's my job because the, probably the israelites i would have probably wondered i don't see any ship here to transport me how am i going to cross there's no flyover there's no bridge how am i going to cross but then the lord did the unimaginable he said moses stretch forth your rod and i will split the sea now israelites saw this miracle and they got used now when they want to cross jordan okay now probably joshua will lift his sword and it's going to split no god said not the same way the priest will have to step in now these guys said we are hungry where will we get food jesus said what's your problem you need food open your door tomorrow morning there'll be manna at your doorstep amen now the people's problem was oh god gave us manna today what about tomorrow let us collect more that's where you're pissing off god you're doubting him if he's led you thus far if he's brought manna from heaven and quails into the desert which you never imagined and if you could open the rock to give you water don't be focused on finding out how he's going to do it just believe that he's in control and he'll do it for you amen hallelujah there have been so many times that i've been praying lord there was a need for me and i would pray and the same night or the next day i would get an sms saying that so much money was deposited to my account i will call up hdfc stand chart try to find out who did that all they would also have is a reference number i was like boss you're a bank you should know the details They're like we don't know the details if i'm going to ask god god next time i need to know who is depositing that money he will say boss you're not going to get anything at all don't be bothered about who don't be bothered about because i was scared whether if it was some hawala money coming into my account <laughs> what if somebody had wrongly deposited the lord was talking to me if you had prayed correctly why would somebody wrongly deposit money into your account right they don't have got today whatever situation you're going through don't be worried about how god's going to handle it how is god going to heal so in dubai i have a uh, supermarket doing some shopping with my wife suddenly there was this lady who walked up me said and she said uh, are you reenu kumar said, yes of course you saw my head easy to find out i'm reenu kumar she said pastor i want to tell you last month i wanted to commit suicide i went to su- commit suicide i even attempted but then my only hope was the nambu vein saw i all i wanted was a job i did i was not getting a job but then miraculously today i have a very big job with a very high pay totally irrelevant to my work experience she said please do mention about my testimony in your church because i never expected this this could be done only by god teach enough god god will drive us to a point where we will say this was done only by him only he could do that in this life he could give us this healing he could give us this promotion he could give us this upliftment only him hallelujah now mordecai knew that haman was going to kill him he had a poll and he was going to impale him the next day but mordecai was not running no helter skelter and he said oh my god let's to do something and he was not asking god how are you going to you know escape me from the clutches of amen no but the word of god says that harbana one of the king's eunuchs told the king haman has set up a shop and a pole that stands 75 feet tall in his own courtyard he hinted it to use it to impale mordecai the man who saved the king as a nation the king said then impale haman on it so they hung haman on the pole which he had set up for mordecai mordecai did not go and ask god god jesus how are you going to turn the tables 
the pole is already there the date is already set how are you going to do it but it was done it was done and the best part is if you go to chapter 8 verse 1 and 2 it says on the same day king Xerxes gave the property of Haman the enemy of Jews to Queen Esther Mordecai was brought before the king Esther told the king how they were related the king took the signet ring which he had taken from Haman and gave it to Mordecai and Esther appointed Mordecai to be in charge of all Haman's party look at look at this the Lord took the signet ring from Haman's hand Mordecai did not pray Mordecai did not ask but a transfer was done by the king which that king had already planned upon Amen Mordecai was not Lord how is this going to happen Lord are you going to give me Haman's property am I going to get Haman's ring will it be 10 grams 20 grams will it fit my finger will it be my finger size will there be a precious stone ruby diamond what is it Lord and when you're giving me Haman's property what will be the registration cost Lord will you transfer it to my name or my wife's name or can we do it together to just to avoid the property tax no he was not concerned about how the Lord was going to do it he knew that the Lord was in control and somehow the Lord will get it done amen hallelujah dear children of God today morning this is what the Lord is telling you he will get it done it will be new methods it will be new formulas it will not be the same old method but the Lord will get it done there will be transfer of rings into your finger there will be transfer of properties there will be transfer of documents the Lord will do it because you are pleasing him amen hallelujah Mordecai was a humble man Mordecai trusted God Mordecai did not run to the king see I tell you the best part was Haman the king honored Mordecai through Haman and Mordecai was riding the king's horse wearing the king's robe and after that honor was over Mordecai did not again talk to the king he left the palace if it was me on the same day of my honor I would have gone to the king king I have a, let me have a moment you know what king the same guy Haman he's trying to kill me you know no he did not say anything to the king that was his moment he could have spoken to the king and said king this is the situation he did not talk to the earthly king because he knew that the heavenly king was in control amen they should not have got today the Lord is saying stop talking to the earthly kings stop talking to them the heavenly king is in control he knows the date he knows the punishment he knows when he's going to transfer the blessings to you and he's in control don't try to find out how he's going to do his job that's not our job come on tell your neighbor mind your own business don't interfere in God's business okay I don't know many quite often no uh, not quite often this happened during COVID where the husbands were at home and there were many husbands who suddenly started cooking they suddenly started cooking and they were telling the wives you know what this is the quantity you should did you add that did you add this how long did you cook for and you should see the faces of the wives like they're like I put food on your table every day for all these years just because you started watching a YouTube channel you think you can do better than me I am good at what I'm doing right the children of God probably this is what God's telling us today I am good at what I'm doing I know what to do with your life he's in control amen hallelujah come on say aloud amen what the guy was not worried about how it will happen because he knew it will happen today if you're probably waiting for a healing or a breakthrough or for God to build your broken families don't be worried about how it will happen all you need to believe is it will happen the Lord will do it for me amen the last point for today is new documents will be written to nullify the old ones new documents will be written to overcome the old ones Esther said king again she said if it pleases you 
and if I found favor and if I'm pleasing to you let the decree be reversed the decree which you wrote and you know what the king said the king said to Queen Esther and Mordecai he said I have given the property of Ahman to Esther he's been impaled now go ahead send a message to the Jews in the king's name telling them whatever you want he's saying write a new document write whatever you want and he says seal it with my ring right he's saying come on you write a new document and he says write whatever you want and at the end of the day make sure you put my signature so that it's approved Haman got a document saying that the Jews will be killed on a particular day now the king says boss leave all the document write a new document do whatever you want write everything you need put my signature send it to the Jews the children of God a new document was written to nullify the old ones and this morning I want to encourage you the Lord's writing new documents in our lives to nullify all the old ones amen it could be legal documents it could be medical documents it could be financial documents which you have in your life and those records show pain hurt and failures but the Lord saying he's going to give you new documents with his signature already amen it's like giving you an open check already signed fill how much ever you want there was this, this interview which I but I was watching this is uh, I don't know whether you guys uh, watch this program called Shark Tank. You ever watch that? All right, the Shark Tank is a program where all the big business guys sit and then people come and present their businesses. And if it's okay, they invest, they take over the business. So one of these guys who was in Shark Tank, he was in an interview. So there was this competitor who asked him, how did you become a millionaire? Can you teach me? So he said, okay, this is my check. I've signed it. I'm giving you a chance. Write how much ever you want. She's like, how can I do? She's like, no, no, no. Write how much ever you want. No, no, no. I cannot. And she gave the check back, checkbook back. He's like, this is where you failed. I sincerely gave you an opportunity to write, write an amount whichever you want, whatever you wanted. If you had written an amount, I was willing to give you that amount. But you did not take it seriously. You gave back my check. You did not take the risk. You did not use the opportunity. Dear children of God, today the Lord is telling you, boss, I've given you open checkbooks. Right? He's given us open checkbooks. Now, Lord, will you have enough bank balance? Do you want to check your ATM before I, I drop in this check? We do that with people, right? Lord, do you know this is the date, Lord? So before I drop it, do you want to check there's enough balance? He's saying, boss, I've given you an open check. Check from heaven. Use it. fail to understand and today the Lord is telling us he's going to give new documents to us which will nullify cancel the old documents which will overcome the old documents in our life amen so on June 25th the king's secretaries were summoned a decree was written as exactly as Mordecai dictated the first decree was written by Haman to kill Mordecai now, Mordecai has become the Prime Minister. He is writing the document. It was sent to the Jews and to the highest officers and the governors and nobles of all 127 provinces stretching from India to Ethiopia. The degree was written in the scripts and the languages of all people of the empire, including that of Jews. Listen, I'm I just, I just pray and wish, not just wish, I know and I believe that the Lord's writing new documents, new medical records, new legal documents, new property documents, new financial documents for us which will nullify the old ones which we have in life. Amen. Hallelujah. Do you believe in Amen? Do you believe? Can you say an Amen? New document which says that the tumor is not there anymore. New document which says your BP and your diabetes has been healed. New document which says your arthritis, your back pain is not there anymore. New document which says the cancer has disappeared. New document which says your debts have been cancelled. New document which says that you have received a promotion. New document says which confirms the calling which the God has in your life. New document which talks about your children and their children's children. Hallelujah. 
and these new documents will nullify the old documents listen up got one night can change all the distress you been going through all these years just one night one the guy the jews were suffering and they were they were they were crying for their lives and one night just change it all and i want to encourage all today no matter how long you've been waiting or suffering this one night and one moment with god he can just turn the tables for you he can change the unchangeable he can do the undoable in your life don't don't don't, don't look at the facts don't look at the documents don't look at the records a single moment of god's intervention in your life can change years of distress and i want to finish saying the lord's writing a new document for you amen and i was like i was even as i was reading and i was meditating lord i was like imagining the lord telling me you know write whatever you want put my signature it's approved but then imagine if god tells us that he will not tell it to everybody because the king was so confident about mordekai and esther he was confident about their wisdom their maturity and patience he said i don't even want to look at the document write whatever you want because i trust you teacher of god can god trust us this morning to tell us reenu just write a document whatever you want and i'm going to sign it can god have this trust upon us so that we show that maturity and patience and faith and love in god that he says you write whatever you want i am confident about what my child will write and i approve all that my child writes says and does